In this video, we're going to learn how to extract emails from text using Python. This would be useful in applications like scraping a website for emails or validating emails that have been provided via form inputs on the web. So for example, let's say we have a string like this. We'll have a large string here with some text. We'll have blah, blah, and then Kevin at gmail.com, then some more text, then joe.black at canada.ca, then we'll have some more text, then Najib underscore Ali at company.co.uk. So here in this text, we have three emails, this one, this one, and this one. And what we want to do is extract these emails from this text. Now emails follow a general format where we first have a username and the username could have underscores or dots or some of the characters. So we could have things like Najib underscore Ali or Joe dot black, for example. Then we have the at character. Then we have the domain name, like for example, Gmail. Then we have what's called the top level domain name after a dot. So we could have dot com or dot CA, or it could be something like dot co dot UK. So emails follow a particular pattern. We're probably familiar with this pattern just from using the web. Now there's a concept in mathematics and computer science called regular expressions. Regular expressions, among other things, allow us to define and work with patterns. Python has a regular expression module we can use and import. So here, we'll import that module with import re. Then we'll define a function called extract emails to extract emails from text. What the parameter text for the text the function is passed as an argument? Now, this regular expression module has a function called find all. The find all function is going to be passed a pattern and the text. And what this function will return is a list of all the strings in this text that match the pattern it's provided as an argument. Now, to define the pattern, we're going to have to use a regular expression. So we're going to return the results of calling this function. And here we'll define our pattern. So a pattern is equal to, and we define our pattern using a string. Now, regular expressions are a large topic unto themselves, but hopefully going over this will give you a sense of how they work. So the first thing we're gonna do is match for the username. To do that, we have to define that portion of the pattern. In other words, what a username looks like. And a username is gonna be one or more of a certain set of characters. So we'll have here, that set of characters defined inside these square brackets here. We call this a character class. It's a set of characters that we're going to match for. Then we'll have here a plus. And what this means is match for one or more of the characters in these square brackets. Now the characters in those square brackets, we're going to define using ranges. So here I'll have lowercase a to lowercase z, uppercase a to uppercase z, zero to nine. Then we'll have some individual characters like underscore, period, plus, and minus here. So what we're gonna do is match for one or more occurrences of any of these characters, either within these ranges from lowercase a to lowercase z and uppercase a to uppercase z and zero to nine, or these characters here individually. Then after that, we wanna match for the at symbol. So we'll have at, then the next thing we have to match for is the domain name. So we'll have a character class. And again, we're gonna match for one or more of any characters in that character class. So we'll have here a character class with lowercase a to lowercase z, uppercase a to uppercase z, zero to nine, or the minus character or dash, and we'll have plus there. So we're gonna match for one or more of any of these characters as the domain. Then we wanna match for the periods, we'll have period here. Now for this, I'm gonna modify this afterwards, but then we're gonna match for the top level domain. So for the top level domain, we're again going to use a character class. So we'll have A to Z, A to Z uppercase, zero to nine, we'll have minus or dash, and then period, and then plus. So to match for the top level domain, we're using this pattern of one or more of any of these characters. Now for this period here, it's default meaning in a regular expression pattern is to match for any character. 
to escape that, I have to use the escape character here, backslash. And if I want to use the escape character backslash, just like this in a Python regular expression, what I want to do is put a lowercase r here at the start of the string. What that does is it makes it a raw string. If I didn't make it a raw string, I'd actually have to have backslash backslash period to first escape the escape character for the purposes of a Python string and have the backslash included as an escape character for the purposes of the pattern used by the find all function. Now, instead I can just have backslash period if I make this a raw string, which tells Python to interpret this backslash literally. So let's actually save this now and we'll try it out by calling the function. So we'll save this. Then down here, we'll call the function. So we'll pass extract emails, our text. We'll get the emails as a list that it returns and we'll put those using a loop. So I'll have here for email in emails, print out the email. So let's save this now and give it a try. And we get here the three emails in our text. And again, what's going on is that we're matching for each email in this text using this regular expression. Now this regular expression is not a perfect pattern for matching for emails. The pattern will likely match with 99% of real world email addresses successfully, but there are many special edge cases when matching email addresses. If we need to solve the problem with that level of rigor, there are third party libraries which can help with that. And maybe I'll cover those in future videos. But in this video, we've covered how to extract emails from text using Python. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.